call to order the uh, virtual public meeting of the Arlington Housing Authority of March 23rd, 2021. It is now 7.04. Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, roll call, uh, Fiorella. Here. Joanne. You're on mute, Joanne. I did that to help. Here. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. And Gar. I saw Gar somewhere. Yeah, Gar. here. Hey, well, great. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Uh, appointments. Do we have any local tenant organizations like to speak tonight? Anybody um, here? Pam Hauser, President, Pam Hauser, President Winslow Towers. I don't have anything to say right at the moment, but I do have a couple of questions on things coming up on the agenda that I'd like to speak at. Okay, cool. Thanks, Pam. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else? Okay, uh, general public, uh, John Ward, you said you had a question for us? Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> My name is John Ward. I live in Winslow Towers. I have been in contact with the Department of Housing and Community Development in regards to the tenant board member appointment that is to be conducted by the town select board. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. As it turns out, the information that, that I've got <clears throat> indicates that the housing, the, America, the Arlington Housing Authority is to submit three to five candidates to the no. select board. No. And it still is to be determined by the Arlington Housing Authority as to how we conduct the uh, selection of the candidates that the, the housing authority presents to the board and since we have um soon to be i'm not sure how the progress is going with the monotony manners uh, uh tenants association but with if we have five, since we have five tenants associations it makes sense that uh, uh there is at least one individual from each one of those organizations that is presented to the uh, town select board what has to be decided by the Arlington Housing Authority here is how that process of selecting a candidate from each group is determined. And what we need to do is, uh, my, my recommendation, of course, is that we incorporate the uh, Arlington League of Women's Voters to help us uh, make sure that it's a democratic process as opposed to a strictly bureaucratic process. And I... Um, would like to know uh, we have 14 weeks meeting right now i beg your pardon it's on ACMI if you want to see it <laughs> we have 14 oh, weeks Joanne, okay you should mute Joanne. you're on the phone yeah sorry that was um jack cooper from the state okay i'm sorry okay i have um, i have four, I yes have, i have um john so let, let, let him finish you let, can let i finish, finish please Hey, have, uh, we, have, we have 14 weeks until that, till that decision, uh, 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 that, till, excuse me, till it has to be presented. And as Miss Breston uh, just mentioned, Mr. Jackie Cooper from the Massachusetts um, Union of Public Housing Tenants Association is a uh, person who could certainly do a lot to help out uh, Miss uh, uh, Miss Bardia and and the Arlington Housing Authority in uh, furthering this process. And I look forward to hearing somebody making some kind of a comment as to how they plan to pr uh, proceed with this, because it is becoming more and more time sensitive and needs to be dealt with. Uh, that's that, that's the, the, the one issue. The last issue, of course, is that the, the uh, Housing Authority has updated some of its information on the website. It has now at least incorporated the names of and uh, officers for all the tennis associations, which is a real plus. Uh, they haven't incorporated the contact information for any of those people. And that's not a plus. There's no way for the, there, I mean, there's, there's no way that every, anybody really knows how to get in touch with the members of the, of the uh, tennis associations. And um, I, I can speak only for Winslow Towers, but I don't see any information posted anywhere as to how we get in touch with those people if there's an issue. Um, 
that kind of information needs to be updated and it needs to be made current. It's a step in the right direction uh, as far as getting that information more current, uh, but it's incomplete, which is um, really not the way to go. And I would appreciate somebody commenting on that. Thank you. I'm finished. Thanks, John. And Nick, can I just comment on that? Go ahead, John. Uh, John, I, I believe you probably misread or um, I just slightly confused on the process for the tenant um, representative board. It's 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 spelled out in detail on the uh, the DHC public housing notices, and uh, I can get you a copy of that. But the way it reads is that they, they want the tenants associations to submit names to the board of selectmen. Nothing to do with the the housing authority. But the only thing we're supposed to do is notify the tenants association um when a vacancy is going to come up so they can compare the names uh the tenants associations themselves to the um the board of selectmen the housing authority is not in the really in the process as far as um setting the ground rules or who's going to be selected or anything like that it's up to the tenants association to submit the names uh mr griffin you're right about that um, what I'm trying to incorporate here is the notion that freedom, the, the tenants associations are responsible for submitting uh, the names. We have, we have potentially five um, tenants associations yep. with this organization. Yep. We have to find a democratic way of all five of those tenants associations to be able to come up with, a, with candidates. They can't be bureaucratic. In other words, we can't have the uh, the tennis association just arbitrarily picking out people and then tossing them into the into the pool. Uh, that's not the way that it should work. And that's why I suggest that uh, the house, the AHA administration, could be helpful in administering that uh, process amongst the, uh, the the tenant presidents, for instance, and Miss Bedia to find out and um, uh, Mr. Jackie Cooper. And there are, I have the names of several people from the um, um, Arlington League of Women's Voters are more than interested in, in helping to, to participate in making this, because this is entirely new. It's a new dynamic and we got to get it right. Um, but you are okay. right. The Housing Authority doesn't have anything to do with it other than helping administratively for all the tenant association presidents who um, need a way of uh, communicating with themselves, um, um, for the residents to become familiar with the processes that they're doing, uh, none of that is in place. And uh, anything that the administration can do to facilitate that would be a benefit. Thank you. Uh, John, I just I want to clarify something. We, I did pass out um, email to the four uh covenant presidents of the tenants association uh the dhcd regulations that when they came out so uh the, that defines the process and, and their information so all four presidents of the association should have that um and if they have questions we can discuss that um at the president's meeting it's that's fine um and your second i forget what your second thing was it was the website. The second item that I, I brought to the attention was the, you're going to get the contact information for the president's association. Yeah, for the there tenants. should be some contact information for all the uh, the officers of the tenants association somewhere. Uh, at, at currently, it's nowhere. Right, and, um, John. Uh, like we, John, on that on that note, uh, the tenants emails and and contact information is private uh, information that shouldn't be out on a website. Uh, and that's been requested that way. The Tenants Association uh, should post their um, president's email in the lobby area and or forward it to all the residents when they uh, become uh, the presidents. Um, well, that's, I hope that you're right because I've been here for three and a half years and there's been nothing. So um, I don't know how it exists in, in the other three elements. And I certainly don't know what's happening with Miss Padilla. And like I say, uh, we, we cannot um, ignore Menotomy Manor in this process because uh, 
Uh, we just can't. And it's, it, it eliminates what I call it is turning this into a bureaucratic uh, um, boondoggle as opposed to a, uh, a democratic process. And that's yeah. my concern. John, what I'll, what I'll, pro John, what I'll promise you is that. Well, go ahead, one minute. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, it is true. The whole process is, isn't uh, being thought out as we go along. Uh, one of the problems is there's what 240 different housing authorities in Massachusetts, and they're organized differently, and they have a completely different process for cities as for towns. Now, I wrote, wrote to uh, Ben Stone of the at the state housing authority, sort of at the top, and he gave it to a woman and answered various of my of my questions. What? in general, they want to do is to, they couldn't figure out how to have all of the tenants vote for their representatives. So instead, they said that each tenant organization, many towns only have one, uh, could select two or three people uh, to pass on to, in this case, the select board. That I asked them in the case of Anonymous Manor, and there are also people who live in condominiums. What are they called? I forgot what they're called, but they're also. They, they can individually send in their application, their VITA and their letter. Um, that this would not be decided by the select board until it became law which would be may 15th and after that they have 60 days for something to do it so this isn't going to happen immediately that according to the regulations that any member who's in place who has not been replaced stays there so fiorella will stay in her position till may 15th or until they appoint somebody else and she can also apply to be, to be appointed. Now, I think what John's issue is that there doesn't seem to be a process by which the individual tenants associations democratically choose some two or three people to pass on to the select board. And I do think that's an issue that we should give more thought. We do have a lot of time to do that, or at least a week or two to think about that. And I'd be glad to go back to Ben Stone and point out that problem. And I'm sorry I didn't pass on the letter I got. I, I sent it to the town council and I sent it to Jack Cooper because I wanted it to be, I wanted them to um, agree and that the town uh, council does. But the problem that John has pointed out has not yet been solved which is how do the two or three tenants, you can go, I guess, do up to three, that the ten, each tenant association, the four of them, because Monotomy Manor doesn't have one. So anybody in Monotomy Manor can apply. Mm -hmm. um, how do they select their two or three candidates? And yep. I think that that's something we ought to take up at our next meeting and Absolutely. have to be consulted with the state again because we have to follow yeah. state regulations. Absolutely, and that's what, we, that's what we have to promise to do. John, we will follow the state regulations. I will ask John Greco to get an understanding and a reading on that. And I will defer to John Greco as our attorney on his information from the state. And we will put a pro we will talk about the process. Thanks, John. Sherry, you wanted to have a Go ahead, Sherry. You're on mute, Sherry. So. Yes, I know. Thank you. Um, first, I, I would hope that Fiorella is reappointed. Um, but I will say that I, I'm wondering how you will get in touch with the Monotomy Manor residents. I do know that the manager there has the emails for almost for a good amount of the folks there who have access. But otherwise, how would you democratically get to those people so that they know what's what's happening. I, I mean, you, other than knocking on doors or putting a flyer or something, considering that a tenants organization may not be formed by then, how yeah. will you 
what is your plan to get in touch with them? We, we Pirella, would, you, you okay. had something to say for Pirella? Go ahead. You're, um, you're, you're good. Sorry, I'm good. Okay. Um, I was uh, talking to High Rock Church today. Um, they usually set up right next to the Life and Skill Center, along with walking to each house. And they have suggested um, that I join them during that time to educate people on the concept. And I think that uh, it would be our best option as of right now. Makes sense to me. What is what? What was your plan, John Griffin, to do that, or Nick? No, our, our plan would be. My, sorry, Nick. Hey, John. Okay, no, our plan would be uh, usually when we have something like that, we deliver flyers to all the houses. Uh, yes. And in general, we'll send them probably emails also. Yep. Thanks. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, you got all of the holiday meal um, right. cards to everybody. So we use, I think you use some of the maintenance people, the manager, and they all got delivered. So yep. we know it's possible. So we and, just have to and, I'd like, and I'd like John Greco to really get an understanding of what the regulations are and then how do we go about communicating it to the to the uh tenants Nick, may I speak? Who's that, Pam? Yeah, go ahead, Pam. Yeah. Yep. Nick, um, in regards to Mr. Ward's comments regarding Winslow Towers, I would be more than happy to make a copy of the regulations that I received from the office and give them to him. And regarding Winslow Towers. There will be an independent committee set up of tenants in the building, not me, on that. So we can go, they can go over the um, um, letters of intent and everything. Um, so we can submit the letters to the Board of Select. Again, Pam, again, you know, everybody has an interpretation of the regulations. I am going to defer to John Greco. He's our attorney, he has experience in all of this. And uh, he has uh, relationships with the state, and I will allow John to. I don't know if you want to talk, to John, but I would defer to John Greco on how we go about this and what the process should be. It's all kinds of interpretations. Saying, People who right. want attorneys. So I would just like John Greco as our attorney to do the interpretation, and we will follow the regulation. Um, John, well, as I, I said, I would, happy 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 happy. I would be more than happy to copy the for Mr. Ward. Sure, thanks. Okay. I, for what it's worth, I, I received a copy of those details um, a over a month month ago, a month and a half ago. So um, I thank Pam for that offer. Um, she's got a good idea about setting up a committee, and that's an important idea. And I think that is the kind of process that I'm speaking to for all of the the uh, uh, tenants sure. organizations that we have, and. Of course, then there's the question of how do we set up a committee? Who, who, how do we arrange that? And um, it's, it's a process. It's a dynamic that's in, in development, and uh, we all have to be patient. And it's in the interest of dem being democratic and making this right. Sure, and that's what we'll, that's what we will do, John. So, um, anybody else on this topic? Great. Okay. Um, Hold on. Elizabeth, you have something to bring up? Hi, thank you. I have um, two quick questions. Well, two questions. One, it has to do with CPA money, which I see which is on the agenda for later. So I'm happy to save mm -hmm. that if, if that would be the preference. Sure, or ask. You can ask for it. Um, I do want to say I was looking for the t January 2021 minutes, and I didn't find them on the website. So it would be great if those could be posted. So my two questions are, um, I remember at the January meeting that there was going to be an immediate survey audit of the windows at Monotony Manor. And I was wondering what the results were of those, of that audit. No, uh, Elizabeth, I, I think you misinterpreted um, in the, uh, the word, I, I don't even think it was called an audit. I think it was called, uh, we're going to go down and take a look at uh, Rachel Cavada's uh, windows, and, and which our maintenance department did go down and look at uh, look at the windows. It was a more you were going to go down and do an audit of because there were so many tenants who were who were talking about the same issue that there was um, a commitment to do. I have this in quotes: immediate survey audit 
of the windows at Bonanomy Manor for people who were complaining? No, no. The uh, I think yeah, I think what we talked about when you you asked about how we do the windows, I said you'd have to do like a planning grant and a study of the windows. It wasn't. Uh, that would that would be the first thing we would have to do. Obviously, the window down the window project down in Army Man would be in the millions of dollars. So usually, when you have a project that like you you do you start out with a study, uh, and they get a uh, possibly some types of windows that you would install down there. Then they would go ahead and get cost estimates. Um, and then after that point, they would um, we'd have to see where the funding are. Uh, if you know. You never know with the lean program and, and the things that are going on with it, uh, they might decide to include windows. Um, lean on it. I don't know, they're not doing it yet. Um, a lot of times when we do projects here, and we've talked even about the windows here, they totally discouraged us and they 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 felt the windows weren't uh, high energy. Uh, I disagree, but uh, so the process would be. And it'll be coming up during this our um, when we do all our uh, capital improvement plans uh, is to put some money aside uh, to hire a consultant to go in and give us uh, a study of what the window is like now and what it costs to replace them, and then we can go from there. So that'll that'll be coming up in the next few months. Okay. Just for, just for the planning, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I did take a I did take a walk down there and I did meet with Fiorella and I looked at the apartment in the windows there. And you know, I came back and made a recommendation to John that we will take a look at the windows at Monotomy Manor as part of a high priority to go forward to try to get funding for. Okay. So But do, am I misremembering because I see that share somebody also remembers as, as an audit. Okay, well, I'll go back and look. I apologize if I misunderstood. Okay. Um, I'll move on to the second question, which was about the CPA money. Um, so I t curiously attended a meeting in January, and I think I, I emailed Mr. Griffin twice about this, and I haven't heard back, so I thought I would bring it up tonight, is that the CPA chair, Eric Helmuth, presented um, the FY22 budget to the select board. This is, I'm reading from the email I sent. And there was a budget item for the Harley, the housing authority for 252,000 plus money to replace doors and update several cottages at Drake Village. And then Mr. Helmuth mentioned that every year the CPA anticipates $500,000 for grants just before the housing authority, but that last year they received no grant requests. So there was $500,000 that went unused. And that this year, FY22, there's approximately $300,000 that hasn't been asked for. So that's $800,000. And then I, I, I counter this with all, I've been attending now for months, six months, and I keep hearing people talk about the windows and the doors at Monotony Manor and that there's no money. And I'm wondering how, what am I misunderstanding? There must be something I'm misunderstanding that this money that you're leaving at the t on the table instead of using it to help the Monotony Manor residents. So if you could help educate me as to what I'm not understanding. Sure. I, I think I think you probably should ask what he actually meant, but I don't believe Eric meant that because that would be illegal for him to uh, do that. Every year the CPA projects uh, are done on a year by year basis. Um, so- Excuse me, John. Before before you go further, John, you're, um, you're not recording the meeting. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm a, right now, I am afraid to hit a button on my phone. I think I'll disconnect from the... <laughs> you think we, uh, we have ACMI. Hey, ACMI, can you, okay. can you please um, record okay. the, your meeting? So, yeah. You're recording it, so. Uh, thank you. Right. Thank you. All right. Now, on, on the CPA money, um, we've put in requests over the years for CPA money, and, and the town's um, actually been been good to us from what they can. CPA money is limited to what they can do. I believe what Eric, if if he did say the housing authority, it, it, that was probably spoken incorrectly. I'm not saying that. Eric's been great to us. Um, 
the town, I believe, sets five hundred thousand dollars aside, probably for housing purpose, not the Allentown Housing Authority. Um, so far, we've we, uh, when we've received money, we've received two hundred thousand dollars in CPA funds for the windows. Where we did when we installed new windows up at Drake Village at the Hauser Building, uh, we had two hundred thousand dollars in CPA funds there. The window project that we're doing starting here uh, next week at Winslow Towers uh, was the year prior to the one you're discussing that we didn't request money. Is They gave us $500,000 at that time. And as you know, there's a lot of, okay, so they, they gave us $500,000 for that one and told us if, if because there's so many other projects in the pipeline, we may not be receiving funds the following year. Um, so we did not. We did not put a request in um, for any funding for that CPA year since we were under the assumption that there was going to be some other big uh, requests going on. Um, so we're getting the five hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars is already spent. We're getting five hundred thousand uh, dollars for this uh, window project here starting this week. The two hundred and fifty, uh, we had put a request in for the exterior work at Drake Village, uh, and we. And put in money, but due to the timing of the CPA and when the project starts, you can't use CPA funds on a project that's already started uh, or before, uh, like the funds we just applied for, for fiscal year 2020, which begins July 1st, 2021. So our Drake Village Cottage project is starting, I believe, possibly even next Wednesday. They're going to mobilize and start doing it. Area scraping and painting and, and fish, fixing the faces and soffits of, of the, all nine buildings. So when we went back to the CPA committee, we told them, you know, we understood that because the, uh, the project is starting before July 1st, we wouldn't be eligible for CPA money for the exterior part of that project. So what I did is I asked the town and the CPA committee that we take um, the Drake Village project was broken into eight different components. The first two were the fake profits, the painting, and the, all the railings, uh, scraping and painting on the metal. The second, um, third part of the project was all new doors. Uh, the fourth part of the project was the doors with the electric strikes and electric um, components so we could use FORB systems. So due to finance, due to the funding mechanisms, we, we couldn't, when we put the project out to bid, we only had enough money to do the exterior uh, fascias and soffits. So when CPA granted, went back to CPA, they granted us $251,000, which is basically the cost of the doors that are going to be replaced. So we're building a separate project for that. Um, and that uh, that's what we'll be using the next group for $251,000 for. So we, John, we didn't. John, can I just make a point? Yep. Okay, Brian. Elizabeth, I think Elizabeth's point was that she's under the impression that the town, the CPA has designated $500,000 every year for the Arlington Housing Authority for housing that's purposes. Illegal. That would be that's, Ill that's correct. That, that's illegal, number one. But number two, if I'm correct, John, and correct me if I'm wrong, that they've continually given funds to the Arlington Housing Corporation um, we've received some funds, they've received some funds. So it's yes. not like yes. we've been negligent in not applying for this 500 grand every year. Uh, we've received a lot of funds over the years, but but it's not, you know, it's important to understand that that 500 grand is not designated for the Arlington Housing Authority every year. Uh, right. I, I and think and I, don't, Brian, I don't believe the figure is only $500,000. I believe they have uh, certain percentages that, yes, they have to uh, right. divvy up. CPA funds yeah. for, but I believe at times it could be up to a million dollars. Yeah. I mean, we're grateful. I just want to echo what you're saying. We're grateful that they've given us money um, when you've requested it and understanding that one year they kind of implied not to request it. But um, but um, I think I think I think that's the point that Elizabeth was trying to get to. Yeah. So, thank you. It's interesting. You know, there's so much that I don't understand. So I really appreciate the context. Um, I'm going to try to look for the budget that Eric put up because there and 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 make sure that I'm, you know, check myself because there was 
I remember him talking about it in the January select board meeting at the presentation, how surprised he was that last year, it, it's not like designated for, it's just sort of like set aside for AHA on, you know, very informally so that it doesn't violate the rules. But I remember him being surprised and then comment and commenting on it, which is why I paid attention because sometimes select board meetings can be a little dry. So it caught my attention and then there is a, you know, on the budget request was Arlington Housing Authority zero. And so um, I, I know that the money, CPA money is limited to its uses to exterior, but that does include the doors and that would include the doors at Manani Manor and, and I guess perhaps the windows, which are exterior, that would really help the tenants who are having such an issue with the, with the drafts and their heating bills that they have to pay. Um, so I'm going to look at that and I, I, um, and I know Mr. Metropolis, I believe, are you on the CPA? Um, yeah, I'm the designated. Yeah. In 2000, in FY 2021, did you guys ask, uh, put any grants in? Yes, we did. I thought we did. Right, John? We did. Yeah, got it. John, you're going to announce that, right? I no, it today. Not, not this year, for the last year, for the last year. I wasn't. It wasn't last year. That was uh, Richie Murray back then. So. Yeah, but did, did the Housing Authority put in any grants that the last cycle? No, because we had we that was that was the you're talking about that we didn't put grants in. Yeah, and I was wondering why. Well, I I, I think I just kind of explained it a little bit. Is that when we the year before that we did receive five hundred thousand? We haven't received it yet. We were awarded five hundred thousand dollars. And and when they did that, they said there probably wouldn't be money there next year because you know they there's some other big projects also coming along in the pipeline, and you know we work in a community here where you know there's tons of different excellent organizations that are um, you know have need access or would like access to that funding also, um, and you know and you try and work. I'm sure they have, they have a minimum amount of money that they can give out. To all the different projects that they want to do some years they hold off on some things other years they um they have a little extra money but we had we had a member rich murray on that committee uh and he was on everyone's on on same understanding that um uh, you know that we were just kind of mentioned to us that there's other projects uh possibly coming and that we wouldn't be applying that year and after receiving five hundred thousand dollars i mean you you want to be a good community member and and not you know playing every time someone you don't get a nickel yeah so. I, I i was under the impression that they're still holding that money for you guys well you have them set over <laughs> i would encourage you to follow up because the impression i had was that they were still holding on to that five hundred thousand dollars and whatever the three hundred thousand dollars from this year and so i i guess i would encourage you guys to follow up on that versus just sort of elizabeth i promise you i'll call, I'll call eric to I will call Eric tomorrow, Elizabeth. Okay. Will you follow that. up with me? I'll put my email in the. Right. Perfect. Thank you. On, on no, that, thank you. Elizabeth, um, we we did ask for this year anywhere between three hundred eighty-one thousand dollars and over and a million dollars to complete right. that project that we wanted to do up at Drake Village would have been a million dollars. Yeah. A lot, a lot of times, a lot of the components, unless it's exterior. And it's ex unless it's for specifically preservation, they will not. They cannot. They cannot. It's not that they don't want to fund it. They cannot fund it. Uh, and a good example is the two hundred fifty-one thousand we got this year. We wanted um, the doors replaced and all electronic strike and fob systems put in into the doors when they when they were installed. Uh, and the and the response came back. They can fund the doors, but since the electronic strikes aren't considered uh, preservation, they couldn't fund it. So I'm happy with the $251,000. Right. No, it would be great to have that 800,000. Yeah. Can I speak? Yeah. Thank you. Please. Hey, yeah, Elizabeth, if I can get the $500,000, I will get the $500,000. All right, good luck. <laughs> That's that's what I do all that's what I do all day, Elizabeth, is negotiate contracts. I'll go get I'll go get the half a million bucks, Elizabeth. Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> I, 
I think one thing, and, and John Griffin should tell me if I'm wrong, but it's not like you can go home tonight, write out a, this money and hand it to the committee. That in fact, you have to have this study done first. So all of this other stuff is in the past, but you have to have a study in order to document what your needs are. Am I right, John? Yes. Griffin? Yes. So it's not like we can go swoop in and get this money. We have to do the study first. So there's a time, there's a process and a, a timeline in which this can, which this has to be done. And they do have very strict guidelines. Like it doesn't have to do with preservation. They can't do anything. I understand with the landscaping at all. And um, it's a little more complicated than just going to get the money. So I suggest we now just move forward what whatever if we can find the funds to do the study of the doors and windows of Menominee Manor because we need the study before we can even apply for the money. Yeah. Do I have that right, John? Yes, Griffin? just so I just want to add one thing. Um, as far as part of the study, what they'll do is they'll look at our capital planning system. Uh, in our capital planning system is every component in, in every building of the housing authority. So doors, the number of locks on the doors, uh, the number of windows, and they have dollar values set with that. And they have what they call a facility condition index that they run uh, programs against based on the age and the condition of each component. And they come out with a facility condition index. And that's how they set aside the formula funding for all these housing authorities based on the facility condition index. So uh, we have about $900,000 in formula funding from the state. Um, and that's based on what they look at in our computer system as, as, as far as the windows go. And they, they set a, uh, an, a functional obsolescence on the windows or any, on any component that'll tell you, you know, when, when that component's going to fire, which would move up if, it, if the windows are older, the, the facility condition index for that building or that development would, uh, would be increased. Nick. Nick Fiorella. Kelder, I just saw that you had something. I'll call you right after Fiorella, sorry. Go ahead, Fiorella. Um, I just wanted to say how fast this study could happen and if I can be involved in it too, I would love to. Because I think that if a study were to be done with each building here, I just had an emergency last week actually where the toilet just water went everywhere and the um, technician was explaining to me how this happened now last year and now there's maybe a concern that it's going to continue to happen as the toilets were probably put at the same time and such. And it's just about this plastic belt. And it, it really, it was terrible. There was like three inches of water. It came down to my kitchen. My roof is all wrinkled, patched up. And I think that if a study were to be done and everyone could see the space between the door, the floor, and there's a huge crack and a door, and then the door. And then in the windows, there's full on spaces that are just opened up. You know, I think that if a study were to be done, it's, starting maybe a monotony manner mostly where other residences have already received updates and such it should be taken into consideration that i feel like monotony manner has been forgotten in a sense okay. Okay. Uh, I, I, I have to tell you i, I disagree with that statement a hundred percent monotony manor actually has probably had the most money spent on it uh, over the past 10 years than any other building in our property by a launch um you know the, wasn't the, the last update back in 2007 or 8 that, that was 2007 2008 we've done the sidewalks after that uh we replaced all the sidewalks we replaced all the exterior lighting a couple of times we added uh on the there heat. was no tenants association though i feel like that was maybe fixed more out of what people what the commissioners could have seen from the outside rather than the tenants themselves on the inside uh, I think that's like a little unfair in a sense, because again, we didn't have a tennis association. And although it was said that it wasn't encouraged or discouraged, the law on tennis associations does say that the Board of Commissioners should be encouraging for a tennis association if we, the, a residency doesn't have one. We would love to have a tennis association down there as a tennis yeah. to deal with. I, I don't think there's ever been 
uh, a time that we didn't want a tennis association down there. It's mm -hmm. just, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the people down there, as you know, are, are working two or three jobs and uh, they don't have time for it with their kids. Well, I mean, I don't want to worry. I don't want to uh, say that everyone's like that. I have already met some people that would be more than happy to be part of it. And so like I, we were talking about before the COVID, COVID regulations, I'll be looking into apps that we can actually use as well. Um, but again, all I want to do is definitely work on having a study done at Monotomy Manor for us to really just see because it can't just we don't have to be you know, architects or professional construction people to be aware of faults that are in here that could be fixed that are not sustainable. See, Riley, it, 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 it's, it's a fair point. So I think, you know, the, what we're trying to get to is get a tenants association down there and we should do an audit on that. I came to your house, I saw it, you mm -hmm. came back, it disappeared. Well, we would, would that be the same thing as a study to be done on the buildings? Yeah, so we should do. Yeah? We should just take a look okay. at. The, we should take a look at the building. All right, awesome. Thank you. See what we see what we can do, right? Okay. And we have to go and get funding. EPA is part of it. We got to go get funding somehow. And, and John is very good at going to get money. He's he's raised thirty million dollars over the last 10, 15 years. So we can go figure it out. So Kelda, you had something to say. Nice to meet you, Kelda. I think you were on last last month, but. Uh, yes. Hi. Yeah. Um. It's good to see you. My, my camera is acting up. Um, so I have three questions, actually. So a lot of these questions about funding would be like totally easily answered by residents who have them if the budget was available publicly. Um, where can we find the budget? Because then there wouldn't be confusion or like he said, she said about how much CPA money was granted, what it was spent on. Like we could just look it up. Where can we find this? Right on the front page of the website, the thing that's called the annual plan. That's not the full budget, no. Like the actual budget. Where's the budget? The operating budget? Our operating budget, we presented it at the um, November meeting. Mm, so is it publicly available online, like to the anybody that just wants to see? What goes in, what comes out, where the funding comes from, um, you know, state versus federal versus local community block grants, like, you know, just specifically just to say, oh, well, well, they received this much money from CPA this year. Like, where is all that? Um, so we can just that, look at it black and white. Black and white. Um, yeah. Every month I give it to each one of the board members. I mean, it's public. As I mean, you want to see what we spend monthly? Is that what you're saying? The operating budget is usually yearly, but I mean, monthly is okay too. I, I just, it's supposed to be publicly available, and I'm wondering where the public um, can find it. I, I believe the uh, annual plan is really what you're looking at. Which, no, uh, no, I've checked that, that out. That's definitely not it. No. I think if you, okay, what you, are you looking, you're looking to see what the budget is and how we do against the actuals and variances and what we receive. The operational, that. operational budget for the, the Arlington budget Housing Authority. We, we review, we review every month. So John, we have to post it. Let's just post it, right? So. So, so it's not publicly Greco, available. Greco, I don't probably not right now. I, I don't think you can tell me, John. Is it on the website? And John oh. Greco, should it be on the website? John. John Greco, you're on. You're on mute, John. Nothing. Nothing prevents it from being in the website. Uh, so that's it's, it's public information essentially, and people have a right to see it. The question yes. is, as long as we update it and uh, make sure that it's current, uh, reasonably current, so people don't get misled. Uh, there's nothing wrong with putting it on the website. Sure. Okay. Okay, so um, I have two other questions. How many application cycles have has the AHA uh, applied for the CPA money? There have been six cycles altogether. How many of them has the AHA submitted an application for any kind of funding? I can't tell you off the top of the head, but off to my head, but I can tell you we got two hundred thousand uh, dollars one year. And five hundred thousand the next, two hundred and fifty-one. So three out of the six we received funding for. Uh, I don't know if they didn't apply for the funding. 
you know, the, it, it's different when you're applying for CPA funding. You have to have a project that's not going to be starting till uh, a later fiscal year, later in the fiscal year, like in July. Like, um, so we 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 don't always have something uh, to apply for CPA for. Oh, also, um, so how come HCA, the housing corporation, can use the money for? rental assistance i mean it's my understanding that although obviously there are legal limitations to what it can be used on and a proposal absolutely has to be submitted and voted on um to get this money it's not as simple as just asking for it obviously but um but there are a variety of things it's not limited to like the exterior of buildings um no, for example is. hca had right. rental assistance for it, it's set aside for Mm -hmm. helping people with low-income housing and acquiring more low-income housing. Um, has the AHA looked into that at all? No, we have what it gives rental assistance. Rental assistance or acquiring more housing or other uses besides uh, like yeah. windows and doors. Yeah, we actually have. I mean, we've over the years, I mean, if you look back on the, on uh, not just the CPA, but if you look back on the community development block grant fund, that was, uh, applied for and what we've requested over the years. I think you'll see both with the um, the CDBG funding and with the capital uh, with the CPA funding is that the majority of that money has gone into uh, affordable housing has not come in the direction of the housing authority. Uh, as far as build requesting funding, we met with the development, redevelopment board a number of years ago. If you check out there in minutes. Um, you'll see we want to start using um, CDBG funds to purchase one bedroom condominiums. Uh, we did end up buying uh, purchasing two one bedroom condominiums, condominiums with the help from CDBG funding. And we did purchase a single family home on the uh, next to 8 Summer Street uh, with CDBG funding. So we have received some CDBG funding over the year. But I think if you look and did a comparison of what our requests have been in this CDBG funding, um, you'll find that you know we'll request two hundred thousand dollars. Some years not get funded at all, and you know it, it's gone more toward um, in, in in a large large amount toward the housing corporation and not to the housing authority. The housing. That's, the, that's the that's community the, block grants, though, right? Not the. Uh, um, the uh, uh, both. If you look at the funding source for both, uh, and what our requests have been, I'm sure the CPA and CDBG or the planning department could give you that information, and it's and it's available also. Um, but you'll see, we've been many many years we've requested funding and not received funding for years, uh, especially if you look at the old minutes of I, the. I did yes. Right. If you look at the select meeting, you'll hear Kevin Greeley. Um, say at that time, say I don't believe that the housing authority should be receiving the development block grant funds. There seems to be yeah a, a ridge there between the housing authority and uh, or a difference of opinion a lot of times. Yeah, I wish that would stand in the way of funding, but I have seen that. Yeah. Yep. Nick, can I make a point? Go ahead, Brian. John, could you explain uh, for the participants on here? What's the difference between the Arlington Housing Authority and the Arlington Housing Corporation? Sure, Arlington Housing Corporation gets all the funding. We know that. So okay. You, so explain how explain how each one is made up. I mean, sure. we're the quasi. We're essentially a state organization. They're a not-for-profit corporation. Yes, the, the, the housing um, the housing authorities was voted on by town meeting. State law one twenty one B was uh, was formed back in 1940s, and in 1948, town meeting voted to create the Alton Housing Authority as a quasi-municipal aid. So it's totally separate from the town uh, and kind of in between. Uh, the Housing Corporation of Arlington was formed by uh, actually three people. Uh, it was Bob Murray, uh, Rich Murray's brother, who's, who's now deceased. He was the executive director of the Falmouth Housing Authority. Um, Alan McClennan from the Town of Arlington Planning Department, and um, and Charlie Lyons. And we 
when they created the housing corporation, I actually had a meeting with uh, Alan McLennan and um, Charlie Lyons, and we talked to them about why don't you do the development work through the housing authority? And they and they said um, they they don't have an interest in it because of all the regulations that the housing authority has to go through. Uh, and so they created the nonprofit housing corporation of Arlington specifically to develop new affordable housing, not low income public housing, uh, but affordable housing. And and over the years, uh, the housing authority obviously has changed. In 2004, um, where they've, they've changed laws and regulations, actually uh, oversight of apartment housing and community development has. Uh, greatly so a lot of times now uh, we handle low income uh, and elderly disabled residents uh, we haven't been affordable housing developers although some housing authorities are switching uh, their model to an affordable housing mixed income development um, but most of the time when a house does that it's pretty much dissolving the housing authority as a public agency and, and making it straight out affordable housing. Now, affo affordable housing will, will you know, um, I'll give you a good example. When they do build a new development, they can project-based Section 8 vouchers into those developments. So when they're going for funding, um, they already have a set uh, project-based, uh, set income stream already built into that project that will be guaranteed by the federal government. Arlington Housing Authority, Right now, as we stand, we cannot use a voucher in our buildings, in any in any public housing authority. They, they have uh, done a, a few pilot programs many years ago, but uh, we're not allowed to do funding uh, a voucher in, within our uh, housing authority building uh, because each program in our building, chapter two hundred, you know, they call. That's the family development. That's it's operated a little differently than the elderly buildings, which is the 667 buildings, which is operated different than the 689. And each one of these programs have different funding mechanisms um, and different uh, rules and regulations of who's in them, how they can be funded. Um, so we're very restrictive on uh, restricted to on that. On the same thing as far as developing goes. Whenever a housing authority does a development, they still have to go out and go through the public bidding process. And that's something the nonprofits don't have to do. And the public bidding process actually increases the cost uh, quite a bit. Um, I know I know the, the concept is to get a, a fair and better um, value for your dollar when you do own public bidding. But sometimes, uh, you know, the, all the developers would rather go uh, a nonprofit route uh, where they have project-based Section 8 vouchers, uh, providing them some, some continued uh, resources. And, and that, that, that's about the difference of them, Brian. Well, see, I, the, the, you know what, the thing I wanted to bring out is the, the difference that the only the only good housing authority, the, the, this, in essence, a state agency, our rent is based on the, the tenant's income. Roughly a third, but roughly a third, give or take a couple points. Uh, roughly a third of your income is paid for your housing. Um, in, in the Arlington Housing Corp, that buys houses and makes them into multifamilies and that sort of stuff, you know, their rent is not based on your income. So uh, their rent can be anywhere. Go ahead, John. Anywhere from where to what? Uh, well, they, they they start out differently. First of all. We uh, our apartments here. There's no like a rent or where we say, oh, the, our one bedrooms is seven hundred dollars a month. You know, our, our average uh, in our buildings, I, I believe it's for an elder, in the elderly building, it might be about five hundred dollars a month in that range, off the top of my head. Uh, where when you go to a uh, an affordable housing development, those units are usually set based on the area median income. Um, and so if they have an apartment, a one bedroom apartment, say the, again, it depends what type of financing you put into a, a development like that. If you're using home funds, you can set it at one price, at one income uh, rent level. 
It might be $1,100 if they have a Section 8 voucher voucher holder that's there. They might be getting $1,800 a month for that particular unit. So it the, their rents can vary from development to development to building to, from unit to unit. Uh, our rents are all based off the income. So if someone, you know, the family development pays 27% of their income toward rent. I mean, minus, we also give them a, you know, a $500 um, heat heat allowance. Uh, so if, you know, right off the bat, the dollars is ejected from calculation uh, to help cover the cost of heat. Right. And, okay, and the real quick, real quick, I got an answer back. Elizabeth, I got an answer back from Eric, and I asked him. The question was, it was five hundred thousand k allocated to AHS that we did not use? AHA, sorry, I went to Arlington High School. Sorry. So, <laughs> hi, Nick. It would not be accurate to say there is annual funding that's CPA reserved specifically for AHA. <laughs> we, have to, we we have to spend. <laughs> at, sorry, we have to spend at least ten percent of CPA revenues each year on the housing category. Well, we can instead reserve that 10% for future housing projects, but we can award that funding to any eligible organization. CPA has funded both the AHA and Housing Corp of Arlington for housing projects. The 10% minimum varies from year to year, but in recent years, this has been roughly 200K. However, the CPA committee has made an informal practice of spending or reserving a minimum of 500K per year for housing. But that is informal and up to our discretion. One restriction to be aware of is that state law prohibits CPA funding from being used for capital improvements to an affordable housing property unless that property was acquired or created with CPA funds. This means we usually can't use CPA for many things that would benefit residents. For AHA, we are limited to funding projects to preserve the building itself, such as windows, roofs, work and other building envelope repair and he's attaching the state law thank you eric so again so thank you sorry there's an echo did that answer your question elizabeth and did that tell you that we're not leaving money on the table and we're well, working closely with it, it tells again, it. again 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 that's 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 his excellent can someone go on mute, please? Two and three. Um, it, thank you. That's it's very helpful. It tells me though that there is ten percent. There is money that they are they set aside for housing in general, right? So that is Absolutely. a bucket for. Yeah. And he said average is about two hundred k the last couple of years. Right. Grab from and it can be used for doors and windows. So I, I, yep. I would love to put that together with the complaints from a not any manor residents and see there be like this union of those, you know, things. Makes and absolute makes absolute sense, Elizabeth. But again, it's not 500K was not allocated to the Arlington Housing Authority. Okay. okay? That's Thank what you. I well, read somewhere from, you know, and that's, I just want to clarify again, it was not allocated 500K for the Arlington Housing Authority. Okay. Thank you. Agree? One last Based I'm on that information. Back and check ACMI. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thank you, Joanne. Think, Nick, one last. Uh, yeah. We can move on. Okay, right, Joanne, speak, and then you can let Joanne speak, then you can go, Brian. Good. Okay. Um, I just think there are people who obviously would like to know a lot more about the housing authority. I'm just yep. afraid we have a lot of business tonight, and maybe there can be a special session for them sometime yep. to yeah. learn. Also, I just want to repeat myself. I'd really rather move forward. And um, I think John Griffin is looking now to get the money to do the study. Once the study is done, a grant application can be made. Is that correct, John? Yes. Yes. So we want to move forward. We don't want to keep yeah. talking about what happened last year and the year before. I agree. I agree. We should move forward. But I just wanted to clarify, I responded right away. And I saw something in that that we're leaving money on the table. and. I'm not quite yes. sure that's that's correct or uh, correct. Well, Go ahead, Brian. Uh, yeah, Eric, Eric responded right away. So, what? Go ahead, uh, Brian. Um, I just was going to say I was going to second Joanne's motion. Let's move on here. We could talk yeah. all day and all night about this stuff, but but no, I, I just wanted to clarify. I just no, wanted I, to clarify. I want to make you a point. I saw it in the chat, and I 
tried to chat back, but I couldn't get the thing to work. But you know, we, we very rarely leave money on the table. And and honestly, if there's a project that we identify, we always find the money to do it. So you know, obviously, it's time perhaps that the doors and windows, and we can get into my report in the facility uh, inspection thing will help on this. But you know, once we typically find and identify things, we're pretty successful uh, through John historically of finding the money to fix these things. Obviously, things take time, but um, but that's all I want to say. And I, I I would second the motion. But I just wanted to make I just wanted to clarify it and get the facts from the agree. So and the facts are there. So thank you. All I all I all I recommend and suggest is everybody gets their facts before um, they make accusations or or recommendations I'll or what. I'll second that. I will say I, I emailed Mr. Griffin two times. I, I sent that email in January. So the only place that I've been able to get my facts is here. Thank you. Uh, but you, you said that Eric, you actually said you went to a town meeting or a, a select board meeting, got the information from there, right? So, right. And then I tried to verify okay. it with Mr. Griffin and I haven't heard back okay. since January. So. Okay. We'll, we'll move on. Thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, <laughs> Project, Project updates, John. Oh, wait, hold on. Anybody else from general public? We're good. Project okay. updates, John. Yes. Uh, I I want to start out with project updates. Uh, I just want to let you. As as one of the things, I just want to let you know we. Um, everyone in in all our elderly buildings have received their first uh, of the virus. It was a. I have I can't say how, how good our staff uh, in working with the Allenton Board of Health, the Health and uh, Safety, uh, Health and Human Service Department from the Town of Arlington, Christine Borgiano, the COA, and, and um, Jim McDad did a, a nice thing here. I just want to read it. It says uh, what she was doing was making notes for me, and I actually forwarded her email to each one of the board members to have this. There's uh, approximately 300 people were vaccinated with the first dose. All tenants were notified door to door with flyers and by email blast. We provided the Board of Health with resident phone numbers and identified uh, LEP, uh, which uh, English language proficiency uh, units. We had residents uh, were contacted by the COA and had interpreters available in Haitian, Creole, Spanish, <laughs> Chinese, and Russian. Uh, Cody from and Senior Services assisted in signing up residents. Uh, the test of the vaccine rollout has been largely due to the partnership between the Town of Arlington, the Board of Health, Council on Aging, and all the nurses, the EMT, and the fire department, and the maintenance men, and especially uh, Housing Authority staff member Jack Nagel. Uh, second dose has yet to be confirmed, but we look forward to providing residents with that information as soon as we are aware. I believe there'll be. Um, we I was talking to Christine Borgio uh, yesterday, uh, who's talking to the state uh, regarding a uh, second round, which should be coming either uh, next or the week after. So, uh, and we'll have more information on that, and it'll be administered the exact same way uh, with the staff. But I just wanted to tell you how, how great the staff has been doing uh, doing this COVID thing. Secondly, she wanted me to attend the. Uh, website. You know, we're actively working to improve the website. We have focused on the first two tabs of the website for general information and the information for applicants. We are ensuring that the information is accurate and up to date. As we move forward, we'll be working on tabs for resident information, the Section 8 participants, and landlords. The intention is to provide updated handbooks, forms, contact information for within the Mountain Housing Authority and resources and programs that may um, and by way of the website is also they also want to provide uh, residents a better understanding of the housing authority operation. So um, that's probably one of the best parts. Great, yeah, um, I'm wondering, um, I know that the chair was notified weeks ago about the 
possible the the uh, um, uh, I can't think of the word about the ability for low income people to get COVID vaccines. And I'm wondering why you never put that on your website. Uh, I believe the link was sent to you. Wouldn't that be something that ought? I mean, I'm not even going to ask that question. That should be on your website. Why isn't it? What What should be on our website? Well, Nick, you know about this. I'm, didn't you tell John? Jeez. Well, what are you asking? Well, there was a link, I believe, sent to you, or at least the, the statement that there is a link available for people who are of low income uh, to get their vaccine. Maybe it's not immediate, but there is an information about it. Why isn't it on your website? Well, what we did, Sherry, when, when we got, one, I think if that was a link um, that I saw, we probably would have put it on the website. But what we did is when we get notified with the information from the Department of Housing and Community Development in the state. We got but this was this was told to you. This was sent to Nick. Why would you not? You know, I know I'm, I'm always. Are you I'm talking about the elderly? Of this is really something that needed to be on your website. Why would no, you but, not put this on a website? Well, Sherry, first of all, most of our tenants don't go to our website. For information, they go directly you to our. Know, you know that, John? You've surveyed them? Yeah, uh, yes, we have. Surveyed. All right. All right. I, I just want to state that I think that that's really outrageous. Well, and let I me. You should put it up on your website tomorrow. No, I'm not putting it on the website tomorrow. Listen. Okay, what, John. Do you want to listen or not? You're I'm here listening. You tell? Okay. When we get notice from the state that the vaccine, they were available for vaccinations. The first thing we did is sent out a, a nice form letter, name and address to every single person, showing, telling them uh, directions uh, as far as the vaccination and the Is that website. That's the manner. We did. They not. They were not eligible. They are now. They've been for a month, for weeks. Well, we're not. We are not providing the vaccinations from anonymous manner, Sherry. You don't have to provide them. This just tells people where they can get information about it. Right, sir. We'll, talk, we'll, talk, we'll talk to John. We'll see if we can get it on the get this they... email or not, Nick? I believe I got it from... You did get it. I know you did. I, did, so... I know I got it. I know I, I, know I got it. Right, so I might have been meant a bit. I might have not sent it to John Grip. I will take Please care of it. Sherry. Yeah. I've, you know, everything, everything you've asked me to do, Sherry, I've probably come through for you so Nick, um, Nick this is a matter of life and death I under, I understand that Sherry and I will get it done I will get it to John you should have had I'm, it done four weeks ago I don't know I, I will take I will take I, I'm not sure I had it four weeks ago Sherry but I I'll I'll take full responsibility you can give me you know whatever you'd like to do Sherry so it's not what I'd like uh, to okay, do uh, it's what you're responsible for Sherry can, can we move on yeah yeah so I'll take care I, I, of it, Sherry. I just want to add, I spoke with Christine Bongiorno, the head of the Board of Health last night, and unsolicited, she told me that how good a job John did with the vaccinations and keeping the tenants uh, aware of what was going on. Did so she tell you that, that the, the low-income residents have the right to get shots as well, Gar? Yeah, she, yeah, why don't you call her? I don't have to. That's your go. job. Sure. Ask her. Sherry is it hey, is we'll move not, on, Sherry. Uh, we'll, we'll move on. Sherry, this we'll is the head of the board head of the board of health saying we we John did a great job. The head of the board of health never checked up on the mice either. So don't tell me about the board of health. I would like to move on. We have a lot of important. We're gonna move business. on. We got yeah, we will move on. Benefit tenants that we might not yeah. get. All right, let's go. Uh CPA Ward, John. CPA Ward, uh as I said, we, we requested between uh, 381,000 and 1 million this time around, and we uh, were receiving $251,000. And that will go to new doors at. Um, at so we requested 380,000 to a million, and we got 250, right? Yes. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Who got the other? <laughs> Who got the other? I have no idea. No idea. So we re, we but we requested three almost four hundred K to a million dollars and got two fifty. Yep. Perfect. Thank you, John. 
I appreciate them working to get us the 250. Absolutely. Yeah. I know they have a lot of projects that they like to fund. So, uh, any questions on the CPA award? All right. Capital improvement plan. Yeah. We just, uh, in it, we need, just need to do a revision for the doors at Fake Village Cottages and the air, air source heat pumps and air conditioning for the Windsor Towers. Uh, lobby and office area. So I'll need a vote to uh, to approve the uh, capital improvement plan revision. So, I lose you? No, nope. still here. Is that in the agenda, John? Yes. It is. Yeah, I, I'd make a motion to approve the capital improvement plan revision for the doors at Drake Village. And the second. And Do you have a second? Oh, oh it's a second. You need uh, to add the heat air source heat pumps too. Yes. So okay. one, all one motion, John Greco. You're on mute, John. You're on mute, John Greco. You're on mute. If you can do them separately, Nick, that would be fine. Yeah, if they're separate expenditure items, so there's no question in case one gets knocked out for ever, any reason, it's better to do them separately if you could. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, okay, I move go to, ahead, Gary. Yeah, I, I move to approve the capital improvement plan revision for the doors at Drake Village. I have a second. Uh, Do I have a second? I think you Go ahead, second it. Thanks. All in favor? Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Brian? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Nick is yes, unanimous. And I only went in that order because that's the way we're on the the video. So. <laughs> okay. And, and B, uh, I'd also move to uh, improve the capital improvement plan for the air, the heat pumps and air conditioning at Winslow Towers office and lobby. Do I have a second? I second it. Go ahead, Joanne. All in favor, Gar? Yes. Joanne. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And yes. Unanimous. Cool. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Joe S. Daly Memorial vote to approve naming of life and skills building to Joseph S. Daly Life and Skills Center. Uh, Brian, did you want to speak? Yep, I do want to speak on that one. So uh, as we voted as we voted in the last meeting, we formed a subcommittee of myself, Nick, Pam, Hauser, and Pat Delaney. Uh, I'm sorry, not Pat. Um, Kathy, uh, Kathy Spencer from Drake. Uh, I've spoken to them all, and we all have unanimously voted and agreed and to, pro to propose that we name the new Life and Skills Building in the manner uh, after the daily. We would, uh, as you see in the print, we would call it the Joseph S. Daily Life and Skills Center. Um, so I would make that in a form of a motion. Uh, I have a whoops. Go ahead, join. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's a terrific idea to call it that. I was just hoping we might have a little shorter name. Um, maybe we could just call it the Joseph S. Daly Center or Community Center, because it's going to be more than life and skills. Not quite what that means, but we're going to have the tenants organization. Hopefully, we'll have the crop there. Um, yeah, I don't you know. Have a suggestion it just makes it people will go around and talk about the daily community center and not i don't think yeah. instead of this name uh, it's I, just I, I don't think anybody in the committee would have a problem with that john you want to weigh in that i mean yeah is there a reason is the reason we call it life and skill nope oh, nope. it will be whatever you want to call that building you may call it i i just on the naming it to Joseph S. Daly, um, as you know, many so we'll get into data with Joe as far as him being a veteran uh, uh, in the town. Um, Joseph S. Daly Community Center, Joseph S. Daly Center, or uh, whatever you want to call it, it's fine with me. But I'm, I'm honored that, he, that we can do this. I think, I think the community center sounds. Um, Yep. 
Fiorella, you have something to say, Fiorella? You're on mute. I was going to say the Levin Skill Center would include, you know, what would it say? Creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, decision making, the ability to communicate. And I think out of all of those, the only thing that we really have in there is maybe ability to communicate with the ESL course. So I, I think the community center would be ideal and hopefully it will become a life skill center. But as of right now, it, it is a community center. Yeah. That's right. So I would I would then uh, put forward a motion that we we name the building in honor of Joe Daly and we call it the Joseph F Joseph S. Daly Community Center um, at the Monotony the building. I second. I second. Cool. Second. All in favor, Brian? Yes. Dar. Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. There's a great tribute to a great man. And yep. can I also, yes. one more thing, yep. Nick? Um, yep. And I would recommend that we, obviously, and, and John's done this before, work on an appropriate plaque and that sort of stuff, but perhaps that we can um wait till this crazy virus is over and then perhaps like september hopefully by then then we can have a ceremony and invite the governor and all the all the people and all the Allentonians, and we can do, do some just cause to uh, enjoy some including Good. family we should have a we should have a dedication day right yeah yeah yep. Yep. i agree okay, go ahead. could i just make a suggestion um the next one is going to take a while and I just have two short reports, one on the karate, potential karate yep. class, and the other is on the tree committee. And if we could get those yep. over, then we could go on to the, is that all right with people? No problem. Yep, go ahead. Okay. okay, I'll start with the tree committee. Um, I've been attending the tree committee for many years. Um, and I live near Chestnut Manor, and I got this idea because some of the residents told me they can't, sit in the benches in July because it's too hot, there's no shade. And the tree committee has actually quite a big fund now to increase the tree canopy. So it took a while, <laughs> but they are now willing to, and also let me just say Monarney Manor has a lot of, has a number of very large, beautiful trees. But they were planted 70, 75 years ago and a lot a number significant number have died and they need to be replaced so the tree committee is offering to donate 10 trees small medium and large and to pay for a professional tree expert to put them in the ground they'll probably be five or six feet at this point um where they are going to be located I think should be, we could take some advice from the tree committee in terms of sun and soil, but I think the residents should have something to say about this. And John Griffin actually called the president of Chestnut Manor and she said, we used to have trees that are too close to the balconies and all the squirrels climbed up and went in the balconies and went in the apartments. So I think we need their advice. So that's it. And we're going to, um, Send John Griffin is just going to send a note to the head of the Department of Public Works to say that we would like to have these trees and we may be able to work with them on getting additional trees for other sites if that's what the residents would like. Um, this is hopefully just the beginning. There are two areas in which the tree canopy is very diminished. So they're very happy to do this. And I think we're very happy to have them. Is there any questions about this? No, I think it's a great idea. Pam? Um, yes. Um, I don't know why we needed a committee on this, Joanne, for the simple reason that whenever we needed a tree, especially here at Winslow, all we did was request to John Griffin and Bob Cronin that we get trees planted, and the housing authority has planted them. So I don't understand why the big thing is about having a committee. We're not a committee. Tree committee is a town committee. They have a lot of money. They've ordered 110 trees. They're paying for the trees. So, and they're paying 
for an expert to plant them. And actually, I found out in my own yard, you need someone who really knows how to set the tree. Oh, yeah. They're planted with them here at Winslow and we've not had a problem. Pam, I don't think, I don't think it's an issue though, Pam. I mean, it's, it's a yeah. good thing to attorney guys. Yeah. <laughs> what do we need to do? What do we need to do, John? Uh, John, I don't just know. You, you tell me you don't even have, if you want to vote, you can vote on it. If, if you want, uh, don't want to vote on it, uh, and you just want to tell me that everyone that the, the, to accept the test, uh, that would be great. John Greco, do we need to vote on? Yeah, let's do that. So I would make a motion that we accept any tree donation from the Allington Tree Committee and John and the staff work to figure out where to put them. <laughs> And the residents. <laughs> and the residents. Yeah. Yeah. I can second that. Okay. Uh, all in favor. Uh, Gar. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Yarella. Yes. Joanne. <clears throat> Joanne. The second is only to talk and, about. Uh, it, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Joanne. Um, I think very short item, which I thought the meeting was a week and a half ago. So I asked for it to be on the agenda and then I sort of, but last fall we talked about a potential karate class um, for the children at Monotomy Manor since they come out of school, they haven't had activities. Um, and it was, we talked about it a lot and a couple of times and then it snowed because we're going to have it outside. So Becca dropped. Um, this time, and also I went out and got someone, made an estimate and so forth. I'd rather bring the estimate and everything if we agree next time. But I wanted to say that I have reports that the children are still without much life activities. The crop, uh, I would like to think this is a pilot program. I've reconceptualized it. And we might only do 15 or 20 kids outside. And if it is successful, as people quite rightly said, well, maybe it won't be popular. Maybe the parents will want it. If it is successful, then we can look for other grant money or with partnerships with the Arlington Recreation uh, Department and make it into a, a, a more regular program. In the winter, we can use our new daily community center for karate. Karate is particularly good in, for all children in um, learning, uh, self-control, focus, and also the feeling of that they can uh, protect themselves if they need to. Anyway, I don't want to have to give a whole I can come with some possible um, to find out if people me to about how much we might be able to uh, sponsor it as a pilot program. For that, we can find other money, uh, volunteers, or whatever. I have a question. Uh, my only concern with that would be the uniforms. I, I took Taekwondo when I was smaller and I do remember my mom kind of, it, it is a little bit expensive. Plus if you want to follow up with going through every belt, um, would that be something that we would continuously just keep doing every single year throughout the whole? Well, that would uh, be good. But, uh, okay. but the first, the last time I proposed it when it was all priced out, it included the uniforms. And the beginning and the beginning belts. And after yep. that, for a second year of doing it or in the fall, the idea is if it's successful, then oh that working with John, we'll be, maybe we can partner with the Arlington Rec. Maybe we can find grants for the programs. That that's the idea. Seed sort of seed money to see it. I think it's a great idea to start the to start the project join and see where we go from there, right? So, so, so I try to get right for next time and see what people think. 
I like it. I think it's a good idea. My only concern would be like budgeting if there's other activities, but I think a karate class would be great. You're right. Self control, discipline, self protection. That's great. Right. So, how do we go about, Joanne? What do you need to do? What do you need from us? Well, I could go back to the guy last time <laughs> yeah. who I spent all the time with and then we never really did it and ask if he's still interested and get, again, I mean, he included at that time, I think, but I would think we'd start with a small class and right. see if that works, 15 or 20 what students. See what his recommendation is, yeah. That's yeah, great. That's what I'll do. Um, the cool. people, Fiorell, I should ask, but I, I asked the woman who does the food pantry and she thought that <clears throat> the 10 to 12 year old kids were at the most loose to ends. They're, sure. the, they sometimes, that, that might be a good, but I can check through Florella with the parents and see what they think, what age group. But we obviously can't do them from kindergarten to 15, even though right. they take, but we'd start with one age group. And what I'll the do- The youngest is, we can do would be ideal. I'm sorry. That'd be great. I said, I said, I think that the youngest we could do would be ideal. Yeah. Um, I'll ask, I'll ask what the karate person thinks. Yes, because then they can move up. I guess. Do we have the demographics of the age groups on there, Hero? What did you say? Do we have the demographics of the age groups? That oh yeah, command? definitely. I'm just thinking okay. that the older kids, maybe other activities in the future. I think the karate class for younger kids would be a great way to build their self-discipline to then go into school and keep that going, you know? I think it's just a great idea. I was wondering how many kids we have at certain age, what certain age. Probably we're gonna at least two in each household, I'd say. At least, and like as so we figured out for the Christmas dinner, I think there's one with uh, yeah. seven children. Was so. it only a, the same person said, <laughs> Nick, this is in your area. Maybe and so we could have a basketball clinic on the weekends since it's a basketball. Yeah. And I mean, the idea is it would just like a we did that. A we did that. Uh, we did that years ago. The Arlington Police actually were helped ran it and helped coach it during the summer. That's awesome. Yeah, ah, that's awesome. for them. Okay. Yeah, we did that. So, and I think Ronnie Kerr is still around at the police station. We can actually ask him to do that stuff. So. <clears throat> okay. Nick, I was back. just wondering, just the age groups. That's all I was asking. How many kids were in each age group from, you know, three to five, five to eight, whatever that. Oh, maybe we talked to the oh, front guy really and let him know what the best groups. Are. Yeah. Okay. There's honestly no. I think there is a lot of more younger kids here than older kids. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Nick, Brian, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think now that COVID's almost over, yeah, I think it's it's certainly worth looking into, but. But my thought is get the tenant association formed and then work with the tenant association to bring this into great programs like the basketball clinic and like the karate thing. So buy them into it and um, to see if, you know, because I think you're really going to do a survey to see if anybody wants to do it. But I think it's a perfect opportunity I because funds, I mean, we have tenant funds. We won't do it. But I've already really? talked to some parents who are very enthusiastic about it so right but remember remember each each facility can get tenant funds and this is a perfect use of the tenant funds to sponsor yes. programs like this so i mean yeah. where, so where are we with that fear have you been successful at all in trying to get this going um i mean yeah i've been doing research joanne has been talking to jack cooper i talked to the like i said high rock church and that's my biggest concern is the COVID regulations, which is why I'm doing research on apps that we could use and even maybe other tenants associations can use it. So things, for example, that uh, tenants are concerned that are not updated in the website for Arlington maybe is something that we ourselves could keep updated once we get the information. Uh, for example, like the budget, the, the operating budget and the budget. That's something that could be included within that all the laws for the tenants associations you know i just think it would be so much more organized and ideal but, but what about what about just creating a simple flyer and having we a can. zoom meeting and distribute it to all the buildings all the all the units down there and say on this date we'll have a zoom meeting to talk about forming uh an association and see if anybody wants to come in i mean i, I you know a simple start like that yeah. would yeah, absolutely be the interest well, you know Having the karate class, if I could feature it again, is a way to show people it's worthwhile having a tenants association and becoming 
community. And I, I, think more than I, I still think it's worth the investigation, Joanne. Figure out, you know, talk to the, the person at the okay. karate and then, you know, see what he recommends as a start and what age group. And I think we go back with Fiorella. Maybe this week we can do a little, the leaflet for the tennis association and including a survey for the karate class and maybe have them email me or something to see if they would be down to do it. Exactly. So just, oh, That's the way to get it. Done. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Perfect. Brian. You need to keep it yeah, going. Cool. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, Fiorella, I'm, I'm happy to help you design a flyer. Um, I've been all that stuff for years. I mean, I'm happy to help and help That'd be design. great. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, why don't, I, why don't I put something together and I'll email it down to you. And That'd then, I mean, and John and the staff um, are, will get it out. I mean, understanding that the board's not supposed to, you know, have the tent. We're not supposed to, we're supposed to inspire them to try and have one. But, mm -hmm. but I think it's going to take a little kickstart, obviously, and perfect candidate to kickstart it. So I'll draw up a slide like that and I'll email it to you and we can go back and forth. And if you like it, we can get John to print them and distribute them and, and you uh, organize a Zoom meeting and, and we can go from there. I'm sure, you know, it's like we said over and over, you know, the population down there is very busy and they get a lot of things in their hands and they certainly don't have a lot of time to volunteer, but I'm sure you're going to find five or six people that will come forward. I'm sure you're going to find that. So, and we only need a handful. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, good recommendation, Joanne. Thank you, Fiorella. So, trying to get that done. Uh, item eight. Commissioner so, Lee, 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 Lee proposal and monthly site review. Um, so this is this is kind of an ongoing thing that we talked about a couple of months ago in terms of trying to get the commission more more involved in the in the five facilities. And um, you know, my thought was we come up with a liaison program, we assign a commissioner to the building and the, and the commissioner interacts with the president of the association. Uh, however, John Greco had a great idea. And as you may or may not know, John Greco was the executive director for the Medford House for many, many years. Uh, his, in his board, what they did is they didn't have to take a signed building, they rotated every month. And every month, one of the commissioners would meet and, and tour the facility and put a checklist you know of the status of the facility so what i put together and emailed you folks uh and unfortunately because we're on john's phone doing this we, we can't put it up on the screen to share but i put a simple spreadsheet together and, and my thought behind this was if, if my month at village then i would call kathy spencer and say hey, what's a good time to meet with you um i would meet with her and we would walk the premise. You know, we would walk outside and inside. And on that checklist, um, for instance, you see outside. So, and it's very simple. The driveway, the walkways, the building facade and other. And there's a column that says clean, another one that says working, and another one that says need attention. So if you discovered there's massive cracks in the driveway, you obviously check needs attention and you, you make a note under the note section. Then you go in the front door and you, is the door working properly? Uh, do the buzzers work? Is it clean? Um, you know, the side doors, and there's other things that you see side doors and, and, and always in other. Uh, and then you would walk the building, first floor hallways, greeting room, um, community room, ceiling, windows. And, and this kind of came about when I met with the folks at CUSAC <clears throat> and we went into the community room and I immediately noticed some of the ceiling tiles were out. You know, and, and um, you know, in other other issues that are simple but needed attention. You know, and I chatted with John about it. And I think, I mean, we're in the COVID time, so it's tough to point fingers or even think that way. So I think, but if this was, if I was inspecting CUSAC, I would make a note of those ceiling tiles. And then we would hand this document. Um, we could either simply email it into John to get it into the system for repairs and follow up. So um, it also gives the presidents a little bit of a buy-in. Now I spoke to a couple of the presidents uh, before this meeting and they, they love the idea. Um, and I think it gives the commissioners um, a buy-in and, and more exposure to the facility and the, and the residents. Uh, and I think it helps coordinate things. So uh, perfect point in, in, in case. So if Varela was, the, and if she was the president of the Monotony Manor, 
and I'm touring with Fior Fiorella and she shows me doors that uh, need gaskets and windows that are leaking in the, in the winter time, you know, we're going to catch that before it becomes an issue on a, on our uh, wild zoom meetings here. Um, we're going to, we're going to beat it before it happens and we're going to find yeah. a solution before it happens. So it's not going to, it's not going to become this great battle. It's going to be fixed for it. And same thing with mice. I mean, the fall, Hey, I, I had three mice in my house. You know what I mean? So it's like these things come in in the fall. So we're going to catch this stuff. So I think, I think this type of a program, a little bit of a legwork for the commissioners, but it's not going to kill you. Um, I think it just is a, is a better way of, of oversight um, and help staff kind of identify things. John Greco, do you want to add anything to that on why you thought it was so successful at your place? Yeah, it was very successful. And I think the reason is because every commissioner gets to see every development on a rotating basis. So one person might pick up something, somebody else doesn't, but everybody gets familiar with every development. I think it's really, uh, it, it, it's, it worked very well. And uh, sometimes if, uh, even if you didn't get a chance to get it in an email, if you brought it up at a board meeting, uh, the director would take not notification of that, take notice of that and say, okay, uh, I got these four things uh, to get for maintenance tomorrow morning or something like that. So it does uh, keep a constant eye on things, uh, little things before they grow big, just as you said, uh, Brian. And I think I, I thought it worked very well. Mm. So the Great. form that I sent out is certainly not complete. Um, I, um, so why don't we do this? Why don't we, let's talk about it, but add, email me things that you want to be put on this form. And then we've got to figure out how to design this form so I don't have to list all 14 floors of one building. It's a little easier than that. Um, that. I mean, I didn't expect a vote on this tonight. Like, this is just a proposal. Cool. Does anybody have any thoughts on it? Go in. I, I, do. um, Go in. I don't know. Am I unmuted? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yep. Um, I actually don't know whether a building it is working or not. Um, but I'm wondering, I have two suggestions. One is. We have a maintenance person along too, because they, they, that looks all right, but I know that it's loose and something needs to be done. Nick, Nick, could you ask people? Could you put everybody on mute? I, I, I kind of don't. Can you put everybody on mute? I'm sorry. John, you're all that's cute. I think that's cute. That's cute. That's cute. Yeah, there you go. Okay, okay. Go, ahead, go ahead. I didn't hear that you in. I my suggestion was since um, <clears throat> I'm not an expert on on maintenance, um, it might be helpful to have the maintenance person come along because I might say those stairs look all right, but I know they're loose because I went up them and I think we ought to do something with them. They may they may see things we don't see. That yeah. was one thing. And secondly, I really feel strongly that way to do pest management is to do it pro proactively. And so I, one of these little things should say, you know, has anyone seen a mouse? Is there any sign? And we can write what a, sometimes you don't see them, but there are certain signs that there's a, a pest problem. And so, although I really don't think it's strictly what the state says that commissioners should be doing. I, I think it actually more attention to the condition of the buildings is better. More eyes on it, more discussion. So I would support it with yeah. a maintenance person in it. And, and let me just let me just respond to that one. So really, this is not. And I understand people have. Um, limited knowledge of of operational things whether it be an electric door or something like that or steers like you said this look at this form as a very common sense review so for instance you're not a maintenance expert you're not a mechanic so as you if you look at the parking lot or you look at the walkway going into the building i mean if there's a hole well common says common sense says gee somebody might trip in the hole so that's important so let's, let's write that down and if you see a stairway if, a, if the handle to the staircase is off, you know, the, the, uh, the handle on the side, well, then you'd report that. I mean, so this is a very cursory look uh, to document things. 
I mean, if you felt um, that the hallways look pretty disgusting and it's time to repaint them, you know, then you want to document that. And um, um, I know that we have in the past, we've had the prisoners come and paint facilities. So even though you might document that the hallway needs repainting, I mean, John may already have this in the pipeline for maintenance. Um, they have a, a, a phenomenal and very detailed maintenance system. But I think this, this checks the checker, as they say. Um, and it's really only supposed to be a common sense look, interacting with yourself and the president. And um, surely if the, if the president says, hey, we've got some mice, well, to me, mice comes to the top of the page now. And, and we want to make sure that John does have the program going and all that good stuff. But, uh, but I mean, digest it, look at it, and email me with some thoughts, and, and I can add to it, and we can come up with a final product and, you know, go from there. I think it's a pretty good idea, Brian, and it also gets um, the tennis associations involved and gets communicated. So I think it's a pretty good idea. So go ahead, Joanne, you had a... So, no, oh. just to wrap up, I just wanted okay. to assure everyone um, I'm still working on the communications part. And one thing, sure. talking with some people, I realized that you can't see the website separate from the handbook, separate from other sorts of telephone. Because if you put good information on the website, people don't need to call the office. And so um, I'm thinking of it as sort of an umbrella communications. And uh, there's been some men much more stuff put on our website. But then the question of accessibility. Um, can people find what they want right away? So I've been looking at some other websites. And um, I actually would like to have some, some residents on, sort of on a little committee with me because they have a much better idea of what they're looking for what they need to know right away, whether they can, but we can put something on a link and actually they might know more about websites than I do. And I'm thinking actually if one woman, is she here? I don't see her. She doesn't know, I'm ready to ask her that I can ask in Drake Village who actually knows how to put websites together. But anyone else, um, I just think um, it would be good to do it as a joint project. I think Make it's a great it, idea. Possible for them. And Great. we need John to Wood. John Wood has a lot. It looks like John Wood has a lot of knowledge around websites and what he's trying to find. He should, he probably should help you out. John, 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 <laughs> John, what do you think, John? Would you help? Would you uh, volunteer to help? I'm happy to help with that. I've had my own website for um, ah, perfect. perfect. And, uh, I also uh, think we should find some more recent photographs. And especially those that were websites is trash in and is trash out. That's all there is to it. We've got a good exactly. website. We just need to maintain it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, I want to people different. I just think we need more, more and different photographs too, um, yep. that represent the diversity of the people who live there. Yeah, I agree, to my friend. Okay. Okay, that's Thanks it. Thanks for volunteering. Joanne, jo jo Joanne, you got jo to volunteer. When it comes and you... Yes? Go ahead. Joanne, jo when it comes to the photographs, it's hard to get photographs right now when we can't have meetings or functions or anything. I know. As soon as we get back with the spring of things, we can do it. A lot of things are being held up. But um, yeah, yep. there's more we can do in advance. And then we'll wait, hopefully, by June, people will be out and about and you could have events and so forth. But you're right. I want to show the the residents together and some activities. And we can do those beautiful flower gardens at Winslow Towers. There you go. All right. Flower gardens uh, anything else? Let's see. And yeah. the me. flower garden, Nick. I just I just want to make a comment yep. that the flower gardens won't be happening this year with the windows being put in because oh. we're going to have scaffolding sure. yep. and everything here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So it's okay. Uh, item ten: Office of Labor and Workforce Development. 
Yes, this uh, is from the what state. Is up, John, we have to vote on the wages here? Yes, every, every, okay. every uh, Department of Labor and Industries or Department of Labor and Workforce Development, as it's now called, sets the wage rates uh, for each one of our uh, ele uh, uh, electricians and maintenance aides and maintenance mechanics. Uh, and those are all, um, all set by the state based on the, uh, the type of work that they do. For instance, uh, a maintenance mechanic, he'll have maybe 30% plumbing, he'll have 10% paint, he'll have 30% uh, cleaning. Um, might uh, in in there that sometimes they do bricklay, so they actually, uh, it, which is a a higher paying uh, portion. They might have ten bricklay in there, and and as all those components come together, the state looks at that and they set the wage rates um, that we are required to pay. Um, and usually it's uh, every April first. This this change changes so each year we get this here and the di the difference i i think between this year and last year is probably about 50 an hour so it's not not very big raises but uh okay. i'm sure it's appreciated but you do need to vote on them. okay individually i think nick nick can i i have some hold questions on, on this hold on hold on Dan. Uh, John, do we have okay. to, John Greco, do we vote on this individually or? You can vote, John you can Greco vote on the whole, you can vote on the entire package uh, as it is uh, because it's it's delineated. So it's clear what it is for each trade. Okay, can I ask something, please? I would like Thanks, to John. ask questions before the Go vote. Go ahead, T-Roll, yeah, absolutely. Um, on the last one, I did see that it said yeah, foreman, sure. right? Correct? Yeah. Right. Okay. And I was wondering who the foremen are. The uh, the working uh, foremen are. I mean, I know what they are. I'm just saying who they are, like name wise, because I was under the impression that there were no foremen in the Arlington Housing Authority. No. Yeah. We actually have uh, positions for three working foremen, and and it's it's um, we have two of them. One is. Uh, Dennis Broughton, uh, one is Chris Partridge, and the third one we have not given uh, given out a working form uh, title to. So we do have, we do have an, a, another um, the uh, and according to the state budget, a work a working foreman is basically a maintenance mechanic that has some supervising, uh, does some extra work, um, and he's uh, some of the maintenance. so. What, and um Jen Broden and and um uh, Chris Partridge at this okay who is in charge of like how, I mean I guess appointing the foreman from the team that's already there who's in charge of it yeah so you just I know we didn't have foreman as of recently I'm I'm definitely aware of that so this must have been something recent and then there's a third one that will be coming in I'm assuming from people that we already have hired since they'll have the experience. Yeah, no, we have it, it just be, um, we have work in foreman, but even um, the in the budget, it we're budgeted for working foreman, even if we don't give out the, that title to someone. Uh, we don't pay someone else uh, a working foreman unless they have that. So, but we've always had, we've always had working foreman here at the Housing Authority. Okay. Okay. Um, did, you have, did you have a concern, Fiorella? What, what was your concern? Hold on, hold on. I Pam. have some questions. Next. Yeah, hold on, Pam. Hold on. Fiorella, did you have yep. a concern? Are you, you okay? Who's asking that? Who's asking me what? Nick. 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 What are you saying? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm okay. I just I have really a really the impression that there were no foremen, but now I'm understanding that even if there's no title to the person, I guess. Yeah, but thank you for answering that. Yes. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah, um, go ahead. John, who was our, who was our ground groundskeeper custodian? Do we have one? We don't. We do not have one. We did have one. Then why are we paying, putting that in the budget to pay somebody when we don't have that person to pay? 
these are these are just categories that of maintenance workers in the in the maintenance department that they can't that we can't have. If we wanted to add a plumber to this, we would ask the board uh, um, on the housing authority to vote to include a plumber, uh, which we may end up doing. Um, you know, we but can. We're we not have putting this in the budget, John. We just, we're, John, we're not approved. We're not putting this in the budget. We're just approving the rates, right? Yeah, we just the rates. Yeah. Okay, but I still want to know: Do we have labels? Who are our laborers? We don't have laborers. We we did have laborers. How, but we do not have laborers. How about, how about we maintenance don't, aides? We don't have maintenance aides right now. I, I think we're missing okay, the so point here. Not, no, but the thing is, so what I what I was assert, as under the assumption is our maintenance aides with our summer high is our two kids here that do absolutely nothing. What about a Nick? So I go ahead. <laughs> hey, Brian. So, so let's have, John, let me understand this. These are the wages that the state tells you you have to pay if you have people in those categories, right? That's correct. So That's we correct. don't necessarily have people in there, but you're just letting us know that these are the wages that you now have to pay. Now, do we need a, <laughs> we don't need a formal vote on it because we don't. No, yeah, we do. No, we do need a formal vote. We vote okay. on this every year. So I would make a motion that we accept item number 10 with the uh, titles and the, and the wages that are stipulated by the state. I second that. Okay. Fiorelli, you second it? Is that you? Yes. Good. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Gar? Yes. Brian? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Joanne? Yes. And Nick is a yes. It's unanimous. Um, number 11, COVID update. I think we had that update. Yep. John, I did send you the Can link I that I see. Go ahead. Pam? Yes, I just have a question. John, I spoke to the Council of Aging on Tuesday, um, yesterday, Monday, and I said, when were they going to start putting out the second shots? Because it's coming up on four weeks, 28 days. And the girl happened to say, well, we haven't got the shot, the doses yet. We'll get them next week or the week after. But you have up to six months to get that shot. That's not what I'm hearing on television and from everybody on there. Well, so we're going to get them within the next two weeks? You believe everything you hear on television, Pam? No, but that's... Hey, you believe whatever, everything you hear on television? No, but every health person on there says it's within 28 days. After 28 days, you get your second shot. And this person at the council is telling me six months. Well, what is what is uh, Christine Boyjano telling you, John? Uh, Christine Boyjano uh, yesterday uh, confirmed uh, the accounts with the state that they're requiring for the second accounts. Um, the state sent out 600 vaccinations to the house to the health and human services department for use in our buildings. Uh, they took that and they, um, do I have the breakdown here? They not only did all the residents in our elderly buildings, they took all the elderly people or seniors down at Menominee Manor uh, and vaccinated them also. Uh, so with the extra ones, they, from the 600, um, they, I believe there was about 179 residents uh, down, down at Menominee Manor, I, I believe about 30, about 30 employees of the Housing Authority they vaccinated. So they will use, uh, so yesterday morning um, to the state, Christine Bongiorno requested an additional uh, 600 vaccinations. So usually that takes, I shouldn't say usually, but um, the last time it happened, uh, it took about a week and a half once we got, uh, once she put that request in for the vaccinations to come. So I expect them to come either next week or the week after. Okay. Well, John, I better I tell say something. Yeah, I would, I would go to, you know, the council on aging. I would, I would defer to Christine Bourne journal really, yeah. Pam, okay. to, get, to get the accurate. So I, I think so. Pam, I, got any other updates? Uh, John? I just the best thing right now is just to be, be patient. Uh, 
everyone at the Board of Health, uh, Christine and the Council on Aging, they are working with the state in our these uh, second ones um, accomplish the next. Well, I'll have more. This has nothing to do. Okay. Okay. John, after the um, when after the meeting's adjourned, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the windows. If you could stay on, please. Okay. Is right, that, to, uh, is that really like allowed? I feel like if there's questions to be asked, shouldn't that be to the board in general? Just wondering. Just I don't know. John, are you comfortable with that? Is that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. John, All right. Go. Do you want to ask the questions? Uh, go ahead, Pam. Ask the question now if you want. Okay. Um, you say that you said that the windows are going to start April fifth. Now, granted, you, they put in the forty foot tanker here, and I had people thinking that we had an earthquake, but it wasn't because the building shook. But um, are we going? To, are you going to be able to get me involved with the contractors to come out with the listing of when they're going to do the apartments and where they're going to start top to bottom or bottom to top? Because I'm yep. getting a lot of questions by a lot of tenants on this, and I don't have the answers yet. Yep, we don't have the answers yet. But the answer to your question is, yes, they are putting together a schedule of which side the building they're on. Um, their first, uh, they're first. They're going to be doing the first and second floor. And those two floors don't right. include any tenant apartments, so they'll right. be doing the first and second floor. And then when they when they go into the tenant's apartment, they're going to start. They're going to do one side of the building at a time, uh, and particularly units at a time. So when that when they get to that point, um, they will uh, give us notification of what units they're going into on what days they're go going to be going into the, those because particular. I'm, I'm going to have to have meetings with these people. We we'll, have to we'll have, have meetings with these people. Well, Pam, we'll, we'll have meetings um, when we have the information. And then, uh, well, that's we what I'm saying, when we have the information. Yeah. I mean, well, but we'll, you're saying I can't even have a tenant meeting right now, but I don't even get more than 25 people at a meeting. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, yeah, if there's no information to give, then there's no meeting to be had unless there's other things to talk about. But if the information isn't there, there's nothing. I mean, you have to wait for John to get the information. That's 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 it. I'm not saying that, Fiorello. I, I, we need to have a tenant meeting, period, not even involving the windows. And I only get out of 132 people. That's one person per pop, and I know some poppins have two people in them. I only get twenty-five people, so I could have, have you a been meeting. Doing the like, meetings? I mean, maybe we haven't what? had a meeting since last week. Okay, March. have you tried Zoom? I know that. I mean, even go to meetings, Zoom are all options. We so. don't. Do Ninety percent. I would say seventy-five percent of the seniors in this building do not have computers. What about phones? That they can do. They have to be live. Nick it has to be in person. Nick, go ahead, Brian. Yeah. So, okay. Pam, Pam, could I suggest after you get your second vaccination and two weeks later when you're fully vaccinated and the governor says we can meet, then we'll help you make a flyer to put under every door and you can try and reorganize. But, you know, I hate to say it over and over. The last year has been hell. Nobody can gather, nobody can get together. Nobody's back to work, so we really got to wait till this. We got to be patient and wait till the second shots are out and everybody's vaccinated, and we can kind of rebuild everything. So, and second that, to that, that's John, living what we went through with the Drake Village windows. I'm sure John is going to go overboard to communicate effectively with everybody at Winslow Towers, and I nominate that we fix John Ward's windows first. <laughs> no, I want my done. <laughs> <laughs> I second it. <laughs> no, <laughs> me, me. <laughs> Sorry, John. Right. Um, Anything else, Pam? No, you I, good? I just, well, it's just that I just wanted to comment back to Brian. Yes, I understand that. That's why I'm so adamant of getting the, uh, these people the second shot here in the building so we I can agree. have a tenant meet, bring That's things gonna, up. But it's going to happen. You know, it's just been hell. It will happen. It will happen, Pam. You got to be patient. Uh, yep. You have to be oh, patient. my patience is running thin. I want to go back to work. 
Oh, I hear you. I, I, I no, think, you're not the only yeah. one, Pam. I, I mean, the whole course. country, the whole world is in the same situation. We're actually and not I, in bad shape. Well, Nick, one last thing. Tiffany Hall started moving until September, minimum. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I think after this vaccination and everybody's done and we can gather again, I think we should put on a cook at every facility and celebrate uh, the passing of the COVID. So uh, we can talk about that later. Agreed. Yeah. So do you need a motion to accept the minutes? Yes. Uh, yeah. So approval of the minutes of February 16th, 20, 2020, John. It should probably say 2021, right? All right. We'll do this. So I make a motion that we accept that. the minutes of February 16, 2021. Yes. Do I have a second? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Joanne. All right, I hold think, on, Joanne, go ahead. I think there's a section that says, John, please fill in what the motion was that Joanne made and who made the motion and who seconded it. I know they all voted in favor. I think we have to fill that in. I think the motion was that uh, a member of the Monogamy Manor Organizing Committee could attend uh, yes. the maintenance meetings at the beginning of the month with the maintenance oh, right. and the president's and the president's yes. meeting yes yes that, so you you must have made that motion joanne didn't you yes <laughs> that's what it said yeah you made that while. you made that motion yes <laughs> but do we know who a, seconded it hold on i can you know i can add, <laughs> I look at the tape on that and add that in i didn't i didn't review the uh the tape I know on we that. voted it was unanimous. I know that we voted it was unanimous. Yes. Yeah. So do, do you want me to amend the motion, or do you want to table it and fix it and bring it up next meeting? No, I just amend amend it now. I'll, I'll add it I'll back and look at it now, and we'll do it. Okay. I'll, I'll amend my motion that it be corrected to include uh, Joanne's um, motion um, as just noted, and that it was passed unanimously. I think we just lost John. We lost John. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the battery on his oh, he's he's right. Right. Yeah, I second uh, Brian's motion. If no one else seconded yet, I forget. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Brian? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Go in. Yes. Dear Yes. And Nick is yes. You meant unanimous. Um, I think that, that that does it for the agenda. Oh. Going to adjourn. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second that. You're all seconded. All in favor to adjourn. All right. Yes. Brian. Yes. Fiorella. Yes. Joanne. Yes. And Nick is a yes. So we adjourn. Thanks everybody for joining. And thanks everybody for the conversations. We appreciate it, man. Thanks. Enjoy. Stay safe, everybody. Stay and thank you for chairing, Nick.